On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we take a look back at our favorite albums of the last 10 episodes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bronze Medalist Podcast. My name is Kale. And my name is Jaron. Come on, man. I don't have one. Oh, dang. Well, this is a podcast where one of us drinks a beer, and uh, we talk about metal and stuff, and movies, and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. We're so much, there's so much in store for you. Exactly. We're, we're a wide, a wide spectrum of, of wonderful things. Oh, yeah. Just, just pure, unadulterated wonderfulness. But Kale... Do I sound like this anymore? No. Thank you for bringing that up. So, yeah, last week I did a big old goof uh, (laughs) and didn't use the good microphones because I'm a silly head. That's okay. I was just on my way to the grocery store and I got a text and it was like, I goofed and I said, what happened? And you were like, I may have forgot to turn on the good mics. (laughs) Maybe just a little bit. Uh, so yeah, sorry for everybody that listened to last episode and had to, uh, hear Jaren be quiet and echoey. I, uh, I'm a big silly. I'm a big old silly, but you know what? I'm quiet and echoey in real life, though. Yeah, that's what he sounds like. Like, Jaren can be right next to you, but he sounds like he's (laughs) 10 feet away and in an echo chamber. It's really (laughs) weird. I have to do a lot of, like, modulation on his channel to get him to sound like a normal human being. Yeah, we've actually, the year is actually, um, 2014 right now. It just takes years for him to, you know, pump out all the Yeah, which is really weird, because we've been listening to albums from 2018. Yeah. And, like, like. But thankfully, I have a time machine that lets me listen to albums from the future. But yep. the thing is, the whole reason we're doing this podcast is because it only works with metal albums. Exactly. If I tried to put in, like, uh, like uh, I hear this this up-and-coming character, Kendrick Lamar. I feel like I hear he's getting pretty popular. So if I wanted to listen to one of his albums that, you know, is going to come out in the next couple of years, I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be able to, to hear that. Exactly. You know, I'm just uh, I'm just excited to see that a couple of my favorite bands are still around. You know, I've heard about this band called Slice the Cake. I wonder what's gonna happen. <laughs> oh, wait, we did an episode on them. Huh. I ruined the I ruined the joke. You ruined the joke. I ruined the joke. Okay, so uh, speaking of jokes, what's what's up? <laughs> speaking, <laughs> speaking speaking of, of jokes, jokes, thanks. What's yeah. up with your life, bro? Uh, yeah, uh, my whole life is a joke, but no, I didn't have my morning two classes, um, oh, so that nice. was awesome, I didn't have class till like one, um, but I still got up, and we had to go, there was some like, the professor presentation or something that we had to go walk through, and they were in like the, the student center, I don't remember what it was, it was like the atrium or something like that, um, and, oh yeah, I, I saw that and went and got my uh, my cap and tassel today. Yeah, and so I was <clears throat> supposed to go, but I was just coming from the gym. Like, I got up, went to the gym, and then I was like, okay, I'll just swing by this thing because I'm assuming it's just going to be set up. And I get there, and there's a ton of people, and they're all wearing, like, suits and ties, and the girls have their hair all done, and their makeup is yeah. on point. And I'm in, like, a gray hoodie and shorts, and I'm, like, <laughs> dripping with sweat. Right next to where the presentation was was our like Barnes and Noble bookstore, the college. Yeah. And they have these big windows, so I acted like I was perusing Barnes and Noble and just watched the presentation through the <laughs> store windows. Because <laughs> I didn't. There we go. I, everybody would have looked at me if this big, you know, sweaty guy would have yeah. walked up and just stunk up while everybody was being like, "What's up, everybody? Why is everybody so dressed up?" Exactly. So I just like. You know, would pick up a T-shirt and be looking at it, but also watching the presentation. How long, and... how long did you have to do this for? I mean, it was only like ten minutes, oh, so it wasn't God. too bad. But... I was wor- like, I was, I was kind of hoping that it was like an hour long. 
And that you were just like standing there in the bookstore looking through the window for like an hour. They're like, sir, we're going to have to ask you to sir, leave. Sir, can we help you? Are you are, are you all right? Are you lost? <laughs> Do you know where you're at? Like, what's wrong? What's wrong, buddy? I've been like, it's, it's me. I'm just not up to code with everything. My life's a joke. <laughs> hey, I was right then. You were. You I was were right, right to say your life is a joke. Time machine. Time. We have the time machine oh, for yeah. the podcast. Yeah, so I looked you into went the future. forward and yeah, yeah, I looked into the future and I could see that indeed your life today uh, was a joke, which is weird because we're recording this in twenty. We're recording this in twenty fourteen. Yep. But I could see. I know what day I want this to have supposedly been recorded on. Yep. Uh, four years from now. Yep. And, you know, it's really odd because. Uh, uh, I I don't even really know who you are. I just have you come into my I guess my room at my parents' house to record a podcast with because yeah. I saw in the future that we do a podcast yeah. together. Uh, so this you know, is this some is, deep stuff, everybody. We're developing some new lore. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with you and just like bizarre, awkward experiences? Like all of every time you have a story like that, <laughs> I'm just sitting there going like that would kill me. <laughs> I would have to die, like, I would have to do something to end my life. That I can't go through that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just, it seems like I'm a magnet for awkward social interactions. And you handle them very gracefully yeah, every it, time. It doesn't phase me a ton. I think because I've grown up just not really knowing how to approach these situations. Yeah. So I've just come up with my own way of watching a presentation through bookstore <laughs> window you have a freaking superpower man <laughs> i god i wish i had something like that <laughs> so what's been up with you today um not a whole lot uh during the during the campus show today you know this but the audience doesn't yeah we went up to a little business after hours and we did an interview up there via skype and <laughs> i don't know if you guys knew this in the control room but uh, me, Talent, and our other crew member get up there. We sit down, and you know we're we're gonna wait until it's time for the interview. And I pat my phone or my pocket and realize <laughs> I don't have my phone with me, which we were going to use to Skype in the interview. So I had our other crew member drive us back down oh, to gosh. the university, and I ran in and grabbed my phone. <laughs> and I don't, yeah, I don't know. I was worried that you and like Leaf were gonna see me run past the door because <laughs> uh, we leave the door open in the studio. So like I, I was like, oh, they're probably gonna see me and be like, what the hell is Kale doing? <laughs> but uh, we made it back up there with like, like ten minutes to spare, so okay. it was fine. That's really funny. I didn't see you. <laughs> yeah, no, I I just ran past really quick and grabbed my phone because like it, I put it. So the reason I left my phone is because I was charging it, and when I plugged it in and set it down i said i am not going to forget this and then i did <laughs> so that's i can't tell you the amount of times i've done that where i'll put something down and be like that is where this is i'm not going to forget this and then i do without fail mm -hmm. so yeah that's just that's my life in a nutshell right there so tomorrow i'm going to be working for the powwow uh you know, running registration and some raffle tickets and stuff like that for a class that I'm in is the, I think I talked about the, the class that I had to sign up for at yeah. the last minute. Um, so that's what I'm doing for that class. And then I have to write a, a paper on it and I've got some other papers that I need to write. I still need to write my reflection paper for my senior project and do all that sort of stuff. I don't know how much that is going to get done this weekend, but, uh, yeah. definitely, you know, in the next week, and then after that, I've got a and d game. So it's like, ah, I, I recorded uh, both my, I recorded my shift for tonight and then my shift for tomorrow tonight because I was like, I do not have time <laughs> to go to work tomorrow evening. <laughs> what a convenient place I'm in where I'm like, I don't have time to go to work tomorrow evening. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to record ahead of I'm time. I'm going to do all my work now. I'm going to do all my work now. Uh, if only every job worked that way. Yeah. That would be really nice. But, uh. So yeah, we're uh, we're gonna get into things before we talk about, I suppose, our favorite albums uh, of the last ten episodes or eight episodes or uh, the last the episodes since episode ten that have had music albums that we listen to. 
Uh, we'll talk about that, but uh, there's a new song that I'd like to talk about. It's called Honeycomb, put out by a band that we listened to not too long ago, Deaf Heaven. They've got a brand new single out, and I uh, presume a new album. I, I'm, I know it's a new album. I don't know why I said presume. It's yeah. called uh, <clears throat> Ordinary Corrupt Human Love, which is coming out on July 13th, so I'm, I'm pretty pumped for that. Uh, what did you think of the single? So... I started listening to it, and it's like 11 minutes long. Yeah. Yeah, That I was thinking um, that'll come into play later, the, the length of that. But uh, I started listening to it. I got about three minutes in, and then my girlfriend called me. Uh-oh. And then I just was on the phone with my girlfriend until this podcast. So I liked, yeah. where, it, I liked where it was going. I really okay. enjoyed it. Yeah, um, it's. Uh, I think it's a, a good song to stay for the whole length. I think it might be their longest song so far. Um, and there's a lot of, there's a lot to like on there the same way that there is a lot to like on Sunbather and on New Bermuda. I think it sounds more like Sunbather than most of the songs on New Bermuda, New Bermuda, New, 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 uh, <laughs> a lot like Sunbather than most of the songs on New Bermuda. God! <laughs> it sounds more like Sunbather than most of the songs on New Bermuda. <laughs> that's totally not the third take <laughs> and um yeah it sounds a lot more like that album which i think is a good thing there is a very interesting part in the middle of the song that uh, kind of turns into like a sort of like a pop rock section almost it's it's still got ambient or ambient trappings underneath mm-hmm. but like the the lead is like this sort of pop rock guitar riff which I thought was really interesting when I sat down and listened to it. I, I was actually like taken aback yeah. by it. Like physically I was sitting there and just like leaned back a little bit and like, the, okay, <laughs> I don't dislike this, but this is interesting and yeah. different. So I, uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I mean, I always talk about how much I like different stuff and that definitely qualified. So I think it's a good track to listen to. If you're, if you were hoping to get your fix of new metal from this podcast, <laughs> Uh, check that out. It's pretty good stuff. So, albums that we have listened to since episode 10. Let's get started. So, episode 11, we had Odyssey to the West by Slice the Cake. On episode 12, we listened to Sunbather by Deaf Heaven. On episode 13, we listened to Scryers of the Ibis by Ovid's Withering. On episode 14, we listened to I, I still don't know how to say it. Acroesis <laughs> by Obscura, the band, not the yeah, album. Yeah. It would be weird if an album made another album. <laughs> oh my God, they're replicating. <laughs> uh, then on episode 15, we listened to The Whole of the Law by Anal Nathrak. Uh, on episode 16, we listened to we listened to Flesh Coffin by Lorna Shore. Uh, episode 17, we didn't do an album. We just talked about genres and stuff. Two weeks ago, we had Long Longina by Gridlink, and then last week was Where Owls Know My Name by Rivers of Nile. So that's all the albums that we've listened to uh, in the last, I guess, nine weeks. So, Jaren, if you had to say, if, if, you, if I forced you with a gun to your head, which is not what's happening right now, <laughs> I promise. It's not, guys. It's not. So with a theoretical gun to your head and a theoretical knife to your throat, what's your favorite of these albums we have listened to? Ooh, that's a tough one. It's either um, the Gridlink or Odyssey to the West. Okay. All right. Um, Yeah, I'm going to... I know which one you're going to pick after last week's episode. Yeah, I... Maybe it's too fresh for me to really say. I, th- I think out of especially the new albums, or at least new to me albums that yeah. we've listened to, it's my favorite. Um, and then I think Gridlink comes up after that. And because because of Where Owls Know My Name, I've kind of soured a little bit on Odyssey of the West. I still like it, but it's not nearly the, the masterpiece that I always thought it was. Like, thinking back on it, I... I just remember the first time I listened to it and thinking like, wow, this is so grand and amazing. But now a lot of times when I listen to it, I just, 
I start to get sick of it really quick. And maybe it's because I listened to it way too much at first. Yeah. Because like there was a solid two months there where I listened to this entire album like at least once a week, which I think is far too much for any piece of media. Yeah. Um, so I, uh, I don't know. I, I've changed my opinion on it a little bit. I still think it is very good and has a lot to offer, but I think Where Owls Know My Name sort of represents what Odyssey could have been if it had had a team of people behind it that didn't kind of seem to hate each other. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think, you know, that, that pain and that strife and sort of the struggle to just get that album out and the and the ultimate way that it did sort of colors that album negatively to me. Yeah. As as much as I still like it, I can't say it's my favorite. So yeah, I'm predictably going with where owls know my name because <laughs> it's I, I really, really enjoy it. I yeah. think it's I think it's the best. And then Gridlink uh is a band that I've become very fond of in the last uh last couple of months, I guess, since I discovered them. So once again, with the proverbial knife to your throat and gun to your head and crossbow aimed at your heart. Oh, gosh. And stake at... No, it's a wooden stake at your heart because oh you're a vampire. Oh, gosh. Um, so what's your least favorite? I might say the Obscura one. Really? Well, maybe not. And, and it's not that I hated any of the albums. It's not Scryers of the Ibis? That, no, yeah, that might be it. Okay. Because, I don't know, it's just... Because I don't think on this podcast I've hated anything. Yeah. But yeah, Scratch the Ibis, I forgot about that one. That's like... That was the one that we were both like... Yeah, that was uh, the one that we were both... Uh, <laughs> lukewarm is probably yeah. the most... The, probably the best way. Yeah. Or the most positive way to describe it. I didn't hate it either, but it's not something that I've bothered listening yeah, to. Yeah, and I think that's that's like where like the lowest bar has been set is it's just not something that I ever have interest to come back yeah. to. Um, Cause nothing has been outright bad where I've been like, yeah. you Kale, why are you having us listen to this? And so it's just been like, that one was passable, but I'm not going yeah. back to it. it. It it was a piece of music that didn't uh, hurt me to listen to, but it's something that I have had no interest in, in listening to again since yeah. we started it. I, so you didn't like you didn't like the obscure album all that much, not or, the, or not at least not as much as the other ones. Yeah, it just I don't know. I don't nothing. All the other ones have kind of I guess little things that pop out to me, or I remember thinking, yeah. "Oh, that was good." Obscure, I remember listening to and was like, "Okay." You know, I guess if I'm now that you say that, if I'm being honest, I I kind of feel the same way. Yeah, I do remember being perplexed and then. Uh, intrigued and yeah I I eventually uh liking the the bass on that album i thought the bass guitar was really weird at first and then it sort of pulled me in i thought wow this is you know this sounds different um but i guess now that you say that there isn't a whole lot else about that album that i really remember yeah and pretty much maybe it's because a bunch of these other albums are albums that i'm very experienced with or are more fresh in my mind because we've listened <laughs> to them more recently but uh there's stuff that I can remember from every other album besides Scryers, which yeah, <laughs> how many times do we have to say we didn't really care? <laughs> Although I suppose I don't, uh, I don't really remember all that much about Flesh Coffin either. Yeah, that's uh, true. Other than my annoyance at their use of V's for for W's or whatever, <laughs> I don't know if that was even what it was. No, they used V's for U's. That's what it oh, is. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, the V's for W things is the movie The Vivitch, <laughs> which I've heard is actually pretty good. Still haven't watched it. I probably mentioned that on that episode. I think you did. Yeah, that that still bothers me. I saw one of their songs. I saw a Lorna Shore song come up, and it was that song. And I was like, no, stop. <laughs> stop it. I think it's just so, so overplayed at this point yeah it's cute when they started doing it for black metal in the 90s or whatever yeah it's not cute anymore <laughs> you know it's crazy um because it, it you know you said we we're gonna do a recap for this episode of the last 10 and i didn't even pass my mind but like odyssey to the west that was 
that was number the 11, first, right? Yeah, yeah. That was the first that, one in this batch. That seems like so long ago. And I mean, it is. It's yeah. nine weeks or whatever, but that's... Well, and then we took a pretty long... That's, we took a two-week true. break for spring break, so... Yeah, yeah, it's been even longer than that. It's crazy because when you brought that, when you that was on the list, it was like it was like yeah. s- the snow on the ground and, and it was that cold. Was... And I mean, it was cold two weeks ago. But... Yeah, and there was snow on the ground yeah. two weeks ago. But I mean, like that just that was a long time ago. It feels like. Yeah, I, I agree. It definitely feels like it was quite some time ago. What was the actual date? It was February tenth. Oh gosh, which like. In a way, it, in the context of this podcast, it feels like it was a long time ago, but like thinking about other stuff that was going on with me in February, it feels like pff, like it was yesterday. Yeah. Like for this podcast, which is something that we do once a week, it's like, yeah, that was a while ago. And then when I think about other stuff, I'm like, oh my God, that was February? That yeah, was that's... Three months ago? What? Yeah. I wasn't even 21 at that point. I know. I couldn't even drink beer. I know. Oh, that didn't stop me. No, it, <laughs> it definitely did. I didn't drink. Okay, you were you were a good boy. I was a good boy. Okay, mostly because I was just a coward and I didn't want to get <laughs> caught. But. I was not a good boy. <laughs> um, I think maybe maybe next week or in the next time. I don't know because uh, our schedules are going to get crazy here for the next three or four weeks. Maybe the next month. Yeah, I'm moving into a new place and graduating and we've got finals and all sorts of stuff coming up. So uh, tentatively, I don't know when the next episode of this podcast is going to be coming out. And uh, if we wait a month, then we'll be we'll be separately. We'll be we'll be recording in separate rooms and whatnot. Um, But uh, maybe the next time we'll start off 21 with an album that I don't like, an album that I actively hate. Oh, okay. <laughs> there aren't a whole lot of those, which is why I don't think that is a sustainable model for this podcast. Yeah. Because for the most part, if there's something that I just don't care for even a little bit, I just don't continue to listen to it. Yeah. But there is a, a particular album that I I actively hate. Um, I don't know if I've ever forced myself to listen to the whole thing to see if it's all as bad as I think it is. But generally, just the whole vibe of this band is something that I dislike and think is maybe not worthless. But I, cause they're obviously not worthless because a, a ton of people listen to them and they make uh, a lot of money. Yeah. But ugh, I, I don't care for them. They're, it's not Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they have going for them. They're not Nickelback or they're not Creed. Is but... there... So my girlfriend and I were talking about Nickelback the other day because they're going to be at the the state fair this year. They are, yeah. Oh. They're they're the rock band that's coming oh, God. in. God, where does the hate for Nickelback stem from? Okay, so the hate from Nickelback basically stems from someone at one point said, "Hey, Nickelback sucks," and then it just kind of took off. Um, I, the thing about Nickelback, and I will make, I'll make jokes at their expense all day yeah. long, but when it comes down to it, Nickelback is fine. They make music for the largest general audience, yep. and they're okay at it. None of their songs are written poorly, but they're just good enough. Yeah. Their sin, in my eyes, and what makes them, what, what, why I think they're bad isn't really to do with the the meme of like oh hey Nickelback sucks Nickelback sucks yeah why I think why I don't like them maybe not why they suck but why they suck to me is they just don't do anything new or interesting yeah they bring absolutely nothing new to the table that hasn't you know they do nothing that hasn't been done a million 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 times before in rock and roll. And that is why I dislike them. I think that's why a lot of other people that have legitimate a legitimate dislike of Nickelback yeah. also dislike them. Um, but then it just kind of became the hip thing on the internet to say, hey, Nickelback sucks. Yeah. Uh, and people kind of jumped on the bandwagon without really caring. Yeah. Uh, you know, so that is why... Nickel. That is why Nickelback sucks became like a meme. And, okay. But I also legitimately think they're just kind of 
I think they're worthless. I, I think they yeah. add absolutely nothing artistic to the world. There's no new ideas presented by them. Yeah, and that's like, because when I was younger, I thought Nickelback was really good. Oh, me too. Because I hadn't listened to anything else. Yeah. And then once I listened to better things, I was like, oh, Nickelback is fine. <laughs> like, they have a few, like, Photograph is fine, and there's a few. Look at this yeah, 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 and now that's been <laughs> memed. But like, but, like, they have a few songs that are fine and yeah. then like i still think they're fine and like i totally agree with you that they've been yeah. beating the same dead horse for <laughs> however for long a long time and like i i recall even once i had listened to some some i guess better music uh i still think and maybe i would need to seriously check it out again i still think like their first album is pretty decent and they have some all right ideas Mm -hmm. on that at least the way i recall it but that's been years and years and years and i don't really know if i care enough to check them out again but it's something that i'd be willing to do at some point but uh on this week on the bronze medalist nickel (laughs) silver side up i think is their first album's name uh there's a couple other bands like that that i just don't think are are i i don't think they add anything new like i think creed is just kind of so and creed is not enjoyed the continued success of nickelback <laughs> creed kind of died i don't know if creed is still is creed still around i don't think so i but, gotta, I but, gotta look this up now but like nickelback there is that that huge like you said kind of meme of nickelback sucks but yet they're still making music and like they're still making money and <laughs> oh yeah nickelback's and, still making a ton of money and it, it's so funny because i've seen videos on facebook where he's like i think he was somewhere in europe and he's singing and the crowd starts chanting nickelback sucks nickelback sucks <laughs> and he's like you know stops the song and he's like hey if you guys don't want us here me and my boys will leave and the crowd starts chanting f you f you and so he's why like fine they... we'll leave and then they just that's the end of the concert why did they pay for tickets I, I don't know and that's that's what i thought i was like you you guys are the idiots like sure it's hilarious now that like go on you know yeah these people paid to see you and just to mock you like that's how much yeah. they hate you it's funny in that respect but like if you're paying a hundred dollars for a ticket just yeah. to have a fifteen minute concert, that's not worth it. And see, like I, I don't think there's any band that I hate so much that I would buy a ticket and go see them just to trash them. Yeah, like that is there's nothing in the world that I hate that much. You know, I'm not a very I'm not a very hateful person. I just avoid stuff that I don't like for the most part yeah. instead of. I think hating something, like actually hating something, is such a poor use of energy and time yeah. that you could use for something else. But uh, so back to Creed. Uh, Creed is technically still together, but they haven't played since 2012. Oh, okay. And uh, pretty much all of them have joined or founded other bands. Scott Stapp, the voice of Creed, has uh, joined. Uh, or formed a band called Art of Anarchy, which is, I mean, I can okay, I can see like some death metal band having that name, but because Scott Stapp is associated <laughs> with it, my first thought was, wow, that sounds generic as yeah. fuck. Um, so yeah, the bassist from Disturbed is in it, a former guitarist from Guns N' Roses, uh obviously scott stapp um yeah so that's funny he went on to form a a different band (laughs) with arms wide open on the sunlight (laughs) welcome to this place why do I know that much? <laughs> yeah, sings because the whole I also, song. <laughs> because I also used to think Creed was kind of cool. At pulls, the same time, pulls up thought... sleeve and he's got a Creed tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> That's my darkest secret. How dare you reveal that on this podcast? It's funny the name. Um, how you said it sounds so generic, and that um, reminded me. You know, Childish Gambino. Yeah. 
You know where that name came from? Didn't he plug his name into the Wu Tang Clan name generator? Yep. <laughs> he just he hit twice, you know, first yep. and last, and just... Childish Gambino. And now he's it this works. huge rapper. Yeah. Everybody knows him. An actor. He's in a freaking yeah. Star Wars film yeah. coming up. He's going to be the best part of that Star Wars film. I agree. <laughs> he probably will. But no, that's just, I think it's so funny. Like, because Childish Gambino it doesn't sound generic. I haven't really listened to any of his stuff. You should. It's okay. it's good stuff. I tried to watch his stand-up uh, at one point, and it, I just couldn't dig it. He, he's yeah i don't know if i like his stand-up as much as i like him yeah in like a scripted role yeah i think he's a good actor but his, his stand-up is just a little too high energy for me it's part of maybe the same reason why i'm not a huge fan of like uh of like kevin hart he's just a little a little too upbeat yeah <laughs> i need to be more depressed when I, <laughs> I, I need to i need somebody that is obviously upset with their life and uh is you know some sort of what I'm saying is I need to relate to the comedian <laughs> and I don't relate to Kevin Hart or Childish Gambino because they seem like they've got their shit together. <laughs> you, you need a comedian who looks like he's going to go out there, have a good time and then cry when he gets off stage. Exactly. <laughs> That's why I love Kyle Kinane so much <laughs> is because I think Kyle, like Kyle Kinane looks like what I predict or actually what I know I'm going to look like with my time machine Kyle Kinane is like a 35-year-old Kale's twin, basically, <laughs> you know, balding, beard, uh, beer gut, like, Kyle Kinane is my spirit animal, so uh, maybe, what if, I can't see this far into the future, or else I might, I might cause some sort of a paradox, yeah. but what if Kyle Kinane is 35-year-old me that went back into the past to become a comedian? So you could relate to him. So I could relate to him and talk about him on this podcast, which we're recording in 2014, but it comes out in 2018. Right? Levels, everybody. This is how you craft a good story. We have so many levels. We're going to get some ring theory in here. We're like an onion. We're like an onion or an ogre. <laughs> Uh, speaking of ogres, this podcast is all ogre. Ah! Oh. It's all ogre now. If you like this podcast, give it a like, uh, share it with your friends. You can find us on Libsyn, iTunes, YouTube. You can share any of those things and let people know, let people know about us. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to... See what we look like if you haven't seen our faces. You can find us on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. Kale took a picture um, that he'll be posting up. Um, <laughs> he's got to wait four years, though, so he can post it yeah. in 2018 after Instagram, the rise of Instagram. Yeah, Instagram's not that big back in 2014. Uh, it, it would really sort of take off after that. Yeah, but we're at the Bronze Medalist on all those things. Something like that. If you, just, if you type yeah. in Bronze Medalist, we'll come up. Yeah, I should really, like... <laughs> i should really codify that but yeah screw it oh well oh well so thank you all very much once again for listening to the bronze medalist podcast my name is kale my name is jaron and we have nothing left to say this is my swamp god damn it <laughs>